And our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'd like to share a testimony my mother told me when I was young. Uh, She told me that when she and my dad were newly married, that money was very tight, but that she would always make sure every bill was paid on time before buying anything, even groceries. One day after paying all the bills, she received an unexpected bill. She did not have the money to pay it. She was very new to Christian science, but she knew enough to turn to God for guidance. She said the thought came to her to go to her Bible. She picked up her Bible and opened it at random. And there in the middle of the Bible, she found money in the exact amount she needed for this unexpected bill. She said that she was positive that she did not at any time put money in her Bible. She gave all the glory to God, and she told me that she knew that God always helped us in our time of need, and this demonstration was proof. Mrs. Eddy's statement in Science and Health on page 494 speaks to this. Divine love has met and always will meet every human need. And she goes on to state, it is not well to imagine that Jesus demonstrated the divine power to heal for a select number or for a limited period of time, since to all mankind and in every hour, divine love supplies all good, and indeed it did. I'm so grateful that my mother raised my sister and I in Christian science, and I'm also grateful to my dad who had absolutely no objection to us being raised in this beautiful and practical religion. I'm grateful to God for leading my sister and I to this Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. And I'm grateful for my practitioner who, in listening to God, is helping me see God everywhere. Thank you, Dede, for the readings tonight, and I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Craig. Thank you, Dade Ace, for those readings. And also, I, uh, they're very, very helpful. And I thank God for giving me the opportunity to be a parent in this church. And I think about all the children here and how much they get from the Sunday school. Testimony is that my son now is 18 and he has a, a, a job occasionally on weekends. But I've been taught that God places you, and even when I had, you know, whenever I had work, God would always make sure that I got to, son, got to church. He would just make sure that my schedule was right. And I've been thinking about that and praying about that, but uh, not, not till this week, actually, when it seems the whole church, I was reminded yesterday, was praying that what God has put together, no man can separate. And his schedule on Thursday was that he was supposed to work Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And on Saturday, he comes and tells me in the evening, it was after the watch, that he would no longer be working then, but Monday at 9 a.m. So I thank God, because clearly God put him in his right place and made sure that he was available to come to service, and he enjoyed it so much, and, and in Sunday school, and <clears throat> in his right place. And they gained so much, so that when the world events happen, they're not pushed aside, but they stay with God and keep their peace, and they, they know what's the right thing that needs to be done in any situation. It, this is the wonderful strength of this church. It anchors the, the children to back to God, and it keeps their spirits sweet. I thank God for the unity here. Thank you. Dave Dave from Florida, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, Years ago, I developed a very bad case of laryngitis, and I had no voice. I was scheduled to fly to Ohio to do a presentation to a large number of customers. I called the practitioner for help and said I was worried that I would have to cancel the trip. 
she told me to trust God, go on the trip, and she would be working. She also told me to work with the hymn that starts with, Take My Life and Let It Be. She said to work with a phrase from that hymn that says, Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. I did this on the flight out and just kept knowing and trusting that God was my voice. By the time I got to the customer's office, my voice was back, and I was able to do the presentation, and it was a success. The people that were traveling with me were amazed because when we left Newark Airport, I had no voice, and they were concerned. He used to say I was very grateful for this healing, for the work of the practitioner. I'm grateful for Christian Science and to be a member of this church. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. One of the greatest lessons that I'm learning in this church is to trust God with every single detail of my life. There are reminders and instructions throughout the Bible and our Christian science literature ensuring that there is absolutely nothing to be fearful of or worried about since God good is all there truly is and there is no power or presence apart from him. Rather than seeing challenges in my experience as problems with impossible solutions, I find that I'm better able to face them by starting with God, asking him for the answer, and standing with him with certainty of a resolution, no matter how long it takes to see a breakthrough. Most importantly, I find that I am now better able to maintain my joy throughout rather than being afraid to do so until I see a positive or favorable result. This is something that has been most significant for me. It's a wonderful healing that I'm most grateful for. And I'm so grateful for all that I'm learning in this church that is changing my life. And I'm grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Gary. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Daddy, for those uh, readings. Um, and I'd like to make one more announcement. Due to our uh, membership meeting tomorrow night, we will not have a 9 o'clock watch as we usually do every Thursday, but we will have our 10 o'clock call in and our 10 o'clock watch tomorrow night. Um, I want to express gratitude for a change that took place uh, shortly after I joined this church um, through the help that I received from a Christian science practitioner and, and teacher in this church. Um, she taught me that God is all there is and that as his children we have unlimited good available to us. Well, when I first came to Plainfield, uh, I had some very limited concepts, beliefs about myself. And uh, one of them was kind of bothered me was that I wasn't sure how to be happy. Um, <laughs> when I got here, I thought that, uh, well, you know, if you had a certain kind of education or if you had a certain kind of job or if you hung out with certain people, or if you accomplished certain uh, activities, you know, that all of these things were what would make you happy. Um, I mean, I even believed that I could find happiness in playing games and winning them. Well, so I was pursuing what the world encouraged all of us to do that the world said would make us happy. And I found that I was generally very disappointed. And I yearned to know what, what was it that brought happiness. And it was that practitioner and teacher of Christian science in this church that taught me that happiness was something totally different from what the world tells you it is. 
And I learned fairly early on that the key to happiness is to be doing what God has for you to do. God gives us all talents. He gives us all things to do. And happiness is in doing what it is right for us to do. And I also found out that that means helping others. That you can't find happiness in doing something selfish. <laughs> it just doesn't work. But you can't be unhappy while you're doing things for others. That also doesn't work. So I don't play games as much as I used to, and I'm definitely not as competitive as I used to be. And I'm glad to say that I am a much, much happier person as a result of that. So I'm very grateful for this lesson, very grateful for the help that I received from this uh, practitioner and teacher of Christian science. And I'm so grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for giving us for discovering the science of living correctly and for writing the textbook so that all mankind can learn the joy of living a godlike life. So grateful to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Dale. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for those readings tonight. I am very grateful to be learning to reject fear and to immediately turn to God when a problem presents itself. Recently, from out of the blue, I felt dizzy and didn't know if I could walk straight. I thought I would have to call a practitioner, but then truths immediately started flooding my thoughts from the weekly Bible lesson and a statement from the roundtable discussion. The statement was, there is nothing to change. Our work is not to change things, but to see what is real. In moments, I was perfectly free, and the condition did not reappear. I went about my business doing normal activities, including working on a project for several hours at my desk. I'm very grateful to be working with a practitioner in this church who is steadfast and immediate in the truth and who has guided me in my spiritual growth. I'm also very grateful for all the sharing of truths in this church by the practitioners and members. Even the smallest truth has given me the answer to a problem when needed. So I want to thank everyone for every single testimony. Thank you. Mike. Mike from New York, go ahead. Thank you for those loving readings and the beautiful testimonies. Reflecting over the past weeks, I realize how grateful I am about this past Christmas. Beautiful Christmas Eve sing-along, crowned by the testimony meeting on Christmas Day, made it the best ever. No better way to celebrate Christ Jesus' life of great works than through testimonies of healing. I had great respect for and followed Martin Luther King's behest of nonviolence. My past method of seeking social justice evolved into frustration and anger. That nonviolence must also be mental is based on the teachings of Christ Jesus and reaffirmed by Mary Baker Eddy. The recent wonderful Bible studies on the book of Amos give me, gave me a better understanding how to spiritually approach the issue of social justice through love. The fact that Martin Luther King had often invoked passages from the Bible, often Amos, was pointed out. These things cause me to commemorate, commemorate Mr. King's recent birthday by listening to one of his speeches. The speech was completely about loving and forgiving all of our fellow persons, exactly what I am being inspired to do by attending this Plainfield Church. I also found an article that made the point that maybe an even greater skill 
in Mr. King's oratory was his ability to listen, not only to other people's opinions, but also to God. A quote from an article, Martin Luther King Jr. and the one thing people keep missing about his greatness by John Blake. Mr. King's ability to listen led to one of the most transcendent moments in his life. Some call it his kitchen table conversion. It took place in 1956 when he was considering quitting the civil rights movement. He was dozing off in his bedroom around midnight when the phone rang. It was another death threat. What happened next is recounted by uh, Claiborne Carson. Mr. King hung up and went to his kitchen to heat a pot of coffee. He'd been receiving death threats for weeks since he had accepted a request to lead the boys bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. He was afraid for himself, his wife Coretta, and his infant daughter Yolanda. He wondered how to step down without appearing to be a coward. His head in his hands, King bowed over his kitchen table and prayed aloud in desperation. Oh God, he was weak and had nothing left. Then he listened. King described what happened next. Quote, It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, Martin Luther, stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And lo, I will be with you even unto the end of the world. And at that moment, I experienced the presence of the divine as I have never experienced him before. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. Unquote. I'm so grateful for the teachings in this church that first, it is everyone's right and ability to, to hear God. Second, that includes me. And the classes here give me concrete ways of training myself to do so. We're so grateful to finally be able to see this is based in God's Word, the Bible, Harry Baker Eddy's writings, and in other writings when it adheres to God's Word. Thank you very much for this beautiful meeting, and I am so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Luba from Ohio, go ahead. The weather in recent weeks has been extreme. One weekend, powerful winds were experienced here, and I am so grateful that no damage occurred. Also, another time, a large amount of snow fell, but because of immediate rain after this, that too was not a threat. I'm so grateful for God's ever-present protection in my daily life and the lives of everyone around us. I'm grateful for Mrs. Eddy's stand on weather, which I only learned through the study of science and health. I'm grateful for what this church provides and for the help of my ever present and loving practitioner. Thank you for tonight's reading day day, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Jeremy. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church and for all the practical teaching that I have learned here. On page 126 of Collectania, Gilbert Carpenter gives the rule in Mrs. Eddy's household, quote, simplicity, accuracy, and economy. Excuses are intolerable, end quote. For the past few years, I've been working to live by that, and recently I've found some new ways to conform to this rule. Back when I was first learning how to play guitar, I read about something called economy of motion, which basically means to only move as much as is needed. To constantly be making a bunch of extra motions will both tire you out quicker and prevent you from playing faster. Remembering this recently, I started thinking about how economical all the parts of the websites are and all the programs and files and such that Linda and I use to do this work every day. I realized there was a whole bunch of room to improve, and I have been working on tightening every, everything up since then. There, doing that work has also helped simplify everything and increase the accuracy of the work, since, as an example, I only need to add a specific YouTube link to one location now 
and then the system calls on that to place it everywhere it needs to be. This has made it so the overall storage size has decreased and everything is running a little faster with every step taken. I'm very grateful for all I am learning here about Christian science and how it serves to enrich and uplift every portion of my life. Thank you. And now I have a letter or an email that was sent in from a man in Pakistan. <clears throat> he says, Accept my greetings and salute for the lovely way to produce your unchallenged true thinking or true teaching, sorry, about God as our divine mind, we as his ideal creation, and making it clear what the Christian Science Church is giving to the spiritual thirsty like me. The great work you and your church is dealing regarding foreign languages is amazing and fruitful. I'm having great blessings since I have started learning the Word of God through your website and YouTube channels, especially Pascho, Sindhi, Urdu, Punjabi, Tamil, and Marathi languages are doing great things spiritually in my life when I read and listen. I personally feel in my heart to join the church and will do it soon. I greatly appreciate it and ask my Lord for the unstoppable blessings for the whole church worldwide. And then he, um, oh, and then he just says, I thank you and the whole church again for all of this. And finally, I have a testimony from Diana in Berlin. Hi, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Berlin now, and I would like to express my gratitude for everything that I find through the Plainfield Church that supports my growth and faith. And I especially want to express my gratitude for the readings on God's supply meeting every need and all the testimonies on Wednesday's testimony meeting on January 15th. Tonight, I would also like to share my gratitude regarding safe travels. I fly often, especially between Vienna and Berlin, but also to America. I always pray before a flight, knowing that God is flying the plane, and that the plane, the passengers, and I are wrapped in God's loving care. When there is unexpected turbulence or a seemingly difficult landing, I keep repeating and knowing these truths. When I was flying to America before Christmas, someone told me that flights were getting disrupted because of the weather. I knew that God was in charge of the weather and that I would be cared for. Indeed, my flights were both on time and my plane landed at my final destination actually 15 minutes early. Thank you very much. Thank you. Benjamin. Yeah, thank you, Dave, for your reading. It was very inspiring. Um, in Christian science, we, we are studying and learning that unless symptom or disease is healed in science, it's not actually healed, which means um, unless a situation or disease or symptoms, like I said, is healed by God, nothing is being done. It's like cutting grass. It's going to grow back at some point. But the word of God, truth goes to the roof and remove it completely. Um, growing up as a little kid, I pretty much grew up very strong. But um, I had this problem as a little kid that continued through my teenage years and into my adult year. Every once in a while, whatever that's a change in whether if it's too cold, my nose will be dripping with blood from nowhere. If it's too hot, the same thing happens. And sometimes I wake up in the morning, the, the pillow will be soaked with blood. It just comes from nowhere, and there was no 
diagnosis for that. Um, and there was no answer where it was coming from. And I didn't even take it serious because it becomes part of me. And um, I thought it was funny because whenever it happens, I just laugh, laugh it off and uh, move on with it. But like I said, continuing into my teenage year, into my adult as well. But as, at that, that point, I start to feel like, well, maybe this is a bigger problem than I thought. But I put everything in the hand of God, knowing that God would take care of it. And it wasn't until I came here years ago that it was completely taken care of, like I said. And then through the years, I listened to myself and uh, I thought through it. As I've been here in Plainfield, and every once in a while I would tell myself, this is actually gone because it has never happened, not even once since I, I, came, to, I came to Plainfield. I never experienced it. And here I am. Um, I, uh, I have been able to go through the most extreme weather in my experience, as far as cold is concerned. And in the summer, I've been, I have gone through the hottest weather I've ever experienced in my life, and never, uh, even once, had I had not even a drop of blood coming out from my nose. And what that means is that God had taken care of it. God had gone to the root of the problem and completely eradicate whatever the problem is, which is nothing. It has gone to its root, nothingness. And that's what Christian science does in our life. When you give your life to God, He takes care of it. Takes, he takes care of you. Not just physical things, it takes even things that you cannot even see. And that was my experience. Like the Bible said, who the Son set free is free indeed. This problem has gone. It's been years, I can't even count since I've been here. I'm so grateful for what God has done for me, for bringing me here, taking care of me and everything about me. I'm so grateful for what I'm learning here. I'm grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the music and the readings tonight. I want to express my gra gratitude for the chipping away of chronic fear that I had for so many years since coming here and learning more about God, His Word, and this Christian science. One of the first healings I received when I started attending this church has stayed with me. One night I was out walking my dog and I suddenly tripped in the dark and it happened so fast I fell forward, hit my face on the ground and was not able to stop it. I had been calling a Christian science practitioner at this church to pray with me already at that point and she had been instructing me to memorize the 91st Psalm to, uh, to help work on this idea of fear that I was, uh, was very hard for me to go through the day without fearing something. So this was my uh, work to do, was to memorize this Psalm and to think on it and to take it to my heart. So that is what actually I turned to right away when I failed, and the one line that I had in my heart was that he shall give his angels charge over thee. Uh, the next morning I called her to pray with me and she uh, let me know that I couldn't fall out of love's care. Um, I don't really remember if it was within a day, but it couldn't have been more than two days. Uh, within a day all the discomfort left, but any mark, swelling, uh, and scratches that I had in, uh, left within by the next uh, second day. And uh, you would never have known I had fallen. And it was just on a asphalt street. And uh, there, was, there were a lot of things that could have happened that did not. And I attribute it completely to this 91st Psalm uh, 
memorizing it with the practitioner's very powerful prayers and teachings, and it really stayed with me. I'm very grateful for that lesson and learning about God's protection. I'm very grateful for, to God, to Christ Jesus, and to Mary Baker Eddy for giving us this science and this church. Thank you. Thank you. This is Bruce, and I wanted to thank Dede for those wonderful readings. And when she was reading, it reminded me of a healing that I had many years ago when I was first brand new to this church here in Plainfield. One morning I woke up ill. It was the flu, and I was feeling quite ill. I couldn't go to work that morning. So I called up a practitioner from this church and explained what was going on. Immediately, the practitioner asked me to read this article that Dede read from. It's called Contagion. It's by Mary Baker Eddy. It's in Miscellaneous Writings. And I was thrilled to read that article. So helpful and so good. And one statement from this article that struck me very clearly was the one that Dede read. And it says, If only the people would believe that good is more contagious than evil, since God is omnipresence. I mean, you know, we learn this in Christian science, that God is everywhere and that he's good. Then why not believe that good is more contagious, that good will go around? Because I guess we all know that when people start talking about diseases, they never seem to get off the negative. Well, who, what about the good? I got to believe that that day I was healed very quickly from the prayers of the practitioner and also from the inspired message in Mrs. Eddy's article entitled Contagion in Miscellaneous Writings. It was very shortly thereafter. I was healed and well and felt great. So I'm so thankful for this science, for our leader, Mrs. Eddy, and the example that this healing taught me that good indeed is more contagious. Chardell. Good evening, everyone. I wish to offer gratitude for the January Love is the Liberator magazine. How magnificent. I get a sneak preview because I have the great privilege of being one of the proofers before the final printing. I was thinking about how it is possible that each new liberator is more majestic and inspiring than the previous one. I came to the conclusion that it is the word and work of God of progressing and unfolding regardless of any time. The people working for the magazine have to be spiritually minded and alert, setting aside all human effort. What an accomplishment and a blessing to the world. So I say to all involved, thank you. And I say to the world, take this blessing, ponder its content, pray with it, and send it out to everyone you know. And thank you for those wonderful readings and our beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Lil. Yes, thank you for those wonderful readings and the beautiful music. Several years ago, I had such a proof of God's loving care taking me all the way. Driving to church for one Sunday, I noticed one of my earrings had come a little loose and was almost falling off. So I fixed it in the car when I arrived at church. After the service, I saw in a mirror that it was missing and looked all over church, but never found it. I kept going through the thought that nothing is lost in divine mind. Going to my car after the service, I noticed on the ground part of the urine. And I just kept thanking God that even though it was only part of it, this is such a blessing. Two days later, I went to church to do a couple of things. 
and upon entering the church, I was adjusting the mat inside the door which protects the carpet and found the earring backing under the mat, which was adjusted that Sunday morning that it happened. Well, I just, I just couldn't stop thanking God for, for his great love that he cared so much and that he never lets us down. And thank you again for this meeting. Thank you. Mary. Okay, I have a few things to read. First is from Oregon. In close, please find my donation for 2020. If there were another three zeros attached, it would be closer to what our church means to me. With great appreciation for all the work all of you do to enlighten us. Thank you all. And then a testimony from California. I would like to express my gratitude for God's provision at all times in my life. I work until midnight, sometimes until 1 a.m. It takes me about 40 minutes to get home. Usually there is a parking space available a few blocks away from my house. We have two spaces, but I let my children use them. Anyway, I usually don't mind walking a few blocks to get home. I always feel safe, even when I am walking by myself after midnight. When I feel like I would like to park close to my house, I thank the Divine Father Mother God for a parking space nearby, and then I always find one. This makes me so happy. I have been doing this for a few months now, and it never fails. I say thank you, Father Mother God, for a parking space close to home. And there it is. He provides one for me. Thank you so much for all that you do for the cause of Christian science. And then a, a card. This was from one of our friends. She'd lived in the D.C. area and has now moved to Alabama. We hadn't heard from her for a while. She sent some books for our library. And um, she thanks us for the services, the roundtables, and website, and wishes everyone a happy new year. And if she's listening, I'm very glad to hear from her. It's been a while. Um, thank you, Day Day, for the readings tonight. Uh, the beautiful story of Daniel and the lion's den. <clears throat> and, and most of you know the beautiful picture we have of someone painted of Daniel. And he's in the lion's den. And his back, his back is to the lion's. And he's looking out a small window, up and out to the light. And the point, the message of that picture was that he wasn't looking at the lions or being afraid or being upset that he'd been thrown in there, but he had lifted his thought and was looking toward the light. He was looking toward God. And in doing so, and in praying in that prayerful state, as Mrs. Eddy said that he'd felt love's control over all, the lions didn't harm him. And Mrs. Eddy has that, had that same picture. Uh, one of her students had given it to her, and she hung it in her bedroom at the end of her bed. So in the morning, first thing, she would always open her eyes and see that beautiful picture of Daniel praying to God. And she said how many times it helped her to remember not to focus on everything that was wrong and therefore making it real and more of a reality, but to focus on God, the Father that loves us. And doing that, we are saved from the lions. So anyway, it's a beautiful story. I was grateful to be reminded of it tonight. And thank you very much, Day Day. And Thank you to everyone for this beautiful service. Thank you.